I checked the weather today, and it looks like uh, even though it's going to be cloudy, um, that it's going to be the driest of the days that I'm here. So I'm definitely going to go on and do the triple nickel today. I'm going to ride up to Zanesville. I've got a, a route that will take me on, uh, I think, part of the river road today, heading up there. And then uh, I will so take the triple nickel back. And then we'll just see how it goes. And I'm not in a hurry to get out of here today either. Probably start on the road about 10 o'clock, something like that. Let it warm up. Hopefully some of these clouds will burn off. Leaving Athens, I took 550, 555, 792, 377, and Route 60 all the way to Zanesville, Ohio. Along Route 60, the River Road, there was quite a bit of construction traffic and a few places where we had to stop. But once I turned on 555, the triple nickel, it was clear sailing. Watching this section of video, I think you can see what riding the triple nickel and all of these roads that make up the winding nine down here in Ohio are all about. Not only do they wind their way back and forth, but they also go up and down, and sometimes they do all of that at the same time. As you rise up out of these little dips, you have to be prepared for the road to go in any direction. If you want triple nickel t-shirts, patches, and stickers, well, stop at the Port 37 store in Portersville, Ohio. Since I'm here, I have to get all the paraphernalia. And you can stop for lunch at the Triple Nickel Diner. Although, eh, I just thought it was okay. After lunch, I took the triple nickel all the way down to Route 50 before heading back to Athens. Along the way, I found this farm stand where I got some great peaches. All right, I'm back. Had a great day of riding today. I got out and uh, rode up to Zanesville. Um, so took, gosh, I can't even remember all the numbers of the roads today, but uh, had some really windy roads uh, and then got on uh, the old river highway on the way up to Zanesville. A little construction there, but uh, then got on triple nickel coming home. Just amazing, amazing ride. Um, you got to be careful. Um, it uh, It's a really twisty road and... The biggest thing is that there's a lot of just, you know, blind corners and things out there. So you never know what you're going to end up finding on the other side of it. A farm truck, a tractor, a deer, had a couple of deers cross in front of me. Um, you know, horse poop in the middle of the road. So there's a lot of things you got to watch out for. So it is really cool, though. Great ride today. And best thing, I'm in early today. It's about three o'clock right now in the afternoon. So now I can relax the rest of the day. The sun is out and I can try one of these peaches that I got on the way home at this roadside stand. Looks really good. So let's give it a try. Oh my God, that is sweet. Georgia peaches. Uh, best in the world. Good morning, day number two here in Athens, Ohio, doing the Windy Nine. And uh, today I've got about a 150 mile loop planned. I'm gonna do Pioneer Pass and Rim of the World, right? There's a couple of the Windy Nine routes and then I'm putting together. It's gonna be a little damp out there today, uh, but I think we've got a a clear spot that's uh, coming along here so I can get out and do this ride. So looking forward to it. It's going to slow down and enjoy the day. It right, looks like the rain might hold off. So uh, I'm bringing my mid layer here, but 
Hopefully I won't need it. Uh, looking forward to a great day. The day would start with me taking Route 329 and Route 550 over to Marietta, Ohio. And I know I keep repeating myself, but just more great roads. In Marietta, I would stop for an early lunch at the Boathouse Barbecue, something that had been suggested to me by one of my viewers. All right, so that's an early lunch. It's only about 11.30 right now. Um, having a really nice day so far. Um, my review of the boathouse, the ribs were very good. I enjoyed those. I got some brisket. I got their pick two. Brisket was overcooked and dry, uh, so stay away from the brisket. The beans were good, however, and I heard some guy raving about their uh, wings in there, so stick to those kinds of things. Stay away from the brisket. In the parking lot of the boathouse, I met this great guy from Tennessee. His name's Mark, and he raced motorcycles for 54 years, and his dad was his crew chief up to 85 years old. Well, after lunch, got back on the bike, and guess what? Yep, you got it, more great roads. And along with those great roads, well, there were a few cool things to see as well. So I was told that while I was in Athens, I had to come and try Miller's Chicken. So that's where I am. I was just reading that this place has been in existence in one form or the other since 1947. It's been in this location since 1969. Very good, just the right amount, a couple of thighs and a drum, good stuff. Now just before I left on this trip, I found out through a couple of my viewers that the OWN Moto Meetup for 2023 was going on in Athens, Ohio, the same time I was going to be there. I don't have a channel, but I'm wandering Yankee, New Hampshire. It's Road Glide Andy, West Virginia. Mike from Payne's Rides, Connecticut. Mike Bodin from Marshville, Missouri, no channel. He's anonymous. It was a lot of fun to hang out with these guys after dinner before I headed back up to the Paw Paw Pad. It's good morning. Uh, up early here on Friday morning. It's a little gloomy outside right now, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna end up doing today. I'm gonna sit around and see if it clears up a little bit. And if it does, then maybe I'll go out for something short. We'll see. Um, have a longer ride plan, but again, I don't know. It's Friday, I gotta get back on the bike tomorrow and head home. I got three days to get home. So I may just relax a little bit. We'll see. So while I'm waiting on things to clear up a little bit, I think what I'll do is have another cup of coffee and I need to take a look at my routes going home. So I think that what I want to do is straighten things out a little bit. The ride coming over was very curvy, very fun. I really loved them. 
Uh, but I think going home, I want to go a little faster. Like, for example, the ride that I have going back to Du Bois is listed at about eight hours. It took me nine plus hours to do that ride coming over here. So I think we can, like I said, straighten it out a little bit and get that down to about five hours. And I think I figured out what I'm going to do today. It's kind of a gloomy day, so I really don't want to go on a big, long ride. But I would like to go and see something just south of here, just about an hour south of here. And that is Point Pleasant, West Virginia, to go see the Mothman statue. So as you can see from these pictures, it was a cloudy, gloomy day. So that's why I decided to do something a little bit shorter and kind of take a nice, relaxing day off. So Point Pleasant is a, about an hour from Athens and over a couple of bridges. If you're not familiar with the Mothman legend, it all started back on November 15th, 1966 in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, when two couples who happened to be married were out parking, I guess, at an old World War II munitions dump they call the TNT area. While there, they claimed to have seen a man-sized bird-like creature that chased their vehicle at speeds up to 100 miles an hour. It couldn't run very fast, I guess, but it sure could fly quickly. Now, after this report came out, it was found that two other men saw something similar up to 100 miles away prior to when these two couples saw this creature. Over the next year, there would be about 100 accounts of people seeing what was dubbed as the Mothman. So shortly after this Mothman sighting, a journalist and ufologist named John Keel shows up in Point Pleasant and he starts doing an investigation into the Mothman. He finds that all of these people are having not only sightings of the Mothman, but of UFOs, men in black, and other strange things like a grinning alien named Indrid Cold. Ultimately, all of these sightings would culminate with the collapse of the Silver Bridge 13 months after the original sighting, that is on December 15th, 1967. The collapse happens during rush hour, kills 46 people as the Silver Bridge falls into the Ohio River. Seven years later in 1975, John Keel would publish a book called The Mothman Prophecies. And in that, he would postulate that all of these sightings of the Mothman were really harbingers of doom related to the crash of the Silver Bridge. In 2002, John Keel's book, The Mothman Prophecies, was made into a movie starring Richard Gere and Laura Linney. So is any of this true? I have no idea, but it sure makes one damn good story. All right, well, that was fun. Can't come all this way and not at least stop in to see the Mothman. So uh, I'm going to head down here. The guy in the uh, Mothman Museum said there's a nice Mexican restaurant down the street a couple of blocks. So we'll give that a try. Heading down the street, I found the Mexican place, enjoyed some carnitas and a little Mexican atmosphere. And then I headed back to the bike and eventually made my way back to the paw paw pad where I grabbed my book and decided to read for the rest of the afternoon. All in all, it was a great relaxing day. Good morning, it's now Saturday and I'm up getting ready to start my uh, trip back home. Again, I'm gonna take three days to get there. Going back to Du Bois, Pennsylvania today. So I just gotta pack everything up, clean up the uh, little apartment here a bit, and then uh, we'll get out and hit the road. Kathy told me that if I left any skid marks, she'd be mortified.
Unfortunately though, they'll probably find beard hairs for a month or so. It's kind of like having a cat. One last cup of coffee and we'll pack up the bike. Time to uh, get out my Fantic pump and uh, check the tires and you notice they're a couple pounds low so uh, we'll just top them off. Right out of the gate I made a wrong turn and found myself on some gravel roads. And of course, being on an adventure bike, that was okay. I eventually found my way to Route 550 and headed east. I would then slowly make my way to the larger roads and yes, even a little bit of interstate to get myself easily around Pittsburgh. It was here that I started encountering my first signs of rain. So I'm gonna stop for a little break. As you can see up here, getting some blue sky. So that, that's a good sign. So far, I've had a couple of sprinkles, no big deal. I'm in a town called uh, Aldeco. Ohio. I'm on Route 7 and uh, riding right along the Ohio River. So far a very nice relaxing ride with uh, occasional glimpses of the river. Unfortunately that sunshine didn't last too long and I found myself in my first torrential downpour. All right, I'm here. I made it to Du Bois, back in the Best Western again. Man, the skies opened up on me <laughs> while I was coming in. Coming through Puxatawney, oh my God, the streets were flooding, or starting to flood anyway, and uh, <laughs> I am soaked, at least the outside of me is soaked. Of course, the Gore-Tex keeps me dry on the inside, but everything's soaked on the outside. So uh, we're here in the hotel, gonna hunker down for the night. Thank goodness I'm inside this time. Okay, day eight, time to hit the road. So I jumped on the interstate and ripped off about 75 miles. Got about 183 left to go for the day, so it's not gonna be a super long day which is fine, again, just heading home. So I'll stop for my first break. We're just gonna take a, a lot of these probably today. Once again, the day started off with a little bit of blue sky, but the floodgates would eventually open up. And this time I followed another biker who had no gear on. I mean, he was riding in jeans, a t-shirt, and a half helmet. We finally got to an intersection together and I gave the guy a big thumbs up. He just looked at me and says, that looks a lot more reasonable. So I made it through another torrential downpour. Uh, and then uh, I'm back on the back roads now and uh, trying to find somewhere to eat. But uh, <laughs> there's nothing so far. A little store here called Dandy, they got nothing. So uh, I'm going to eat this apple and then we'll continue on up the road and see what we can find. I never did find a good place to eat, but I did find some more great roads and, of course, some more rain. As I was approaching Hancock, the rain broke and I decided to lift my visor and immediately got smacked with a bug. So I made it here to uh, Hancock. It was a very interesting day. Had a couple of dirt roads, a lot of rain, so I'm breaking my sugar fast. Having a little ice cream today.
I did a little bit better for dinner and went with a grilled chicken salad. All right, everything is packed up for the last time on this trip. I'm headed home. They're calling for some thunder showers, some possibly severe, scattered, however, so I may hit them, may not, in the afternoon today. So we're gonna try to make it home as soon as we can today before those uh, thunderstorms hit. Just met a guy uh, who rode up from Florida. He's going up to do the uh, Northeast BDR <clears throat> on his big GS, so. I told him to have fun and to be careful. Um, anyway, gonna hit the road and uh, see if we can't get home. So my plan for the day was to make my way through the Catskills and then eventually jump on the highway so I could try to beat those thunderstorms. <laughs> okay, so. I stopped for lunch. I'm actually out here at the uh, Lee Service Center on 90, I-90, the last bike. So when I'm out here because, well, the forecast is for severe thunderstorms, including lightning and hail this afternoon. So I thought I would just get home as fast as I can so I can avoid all of that stuff. So I'm trying to have a salad. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> It's not going so well. <laughs> it took me a little while to get it through to them that they owed me another dollar and change. So finally got it and got my salad. So about two hours from home after I leave here. So looks like my attempt to miss the rain has failed. Even though I gave it my best shot, I still ran into some pretty heavy rain. Thank goodness 90 was moving most of the way. It slowed down a little bit while I was approaching 495, but other than that, it was a good day. Luckily, as I got closer to home, the skies cleared up a little bit. It wasn't raining at my house yet, and it would hold off for a few more hours. So there you have it. I am home. I made it through the traffic and the rain out there on I-90. We have no rain here yet. I'm sure it's coming this afternoon. So before that happens, I'm taking the time to sit out on the deck, enjoy a nice glass of peach iced tea that Kathy made and had waiting for me, and enjoy a cigar. So, all right, it was a great trip overall. Very successful, had a great time. So now I get to plan the next one.